Alrighty guys, looking around the shop, you can see is an absolute mess. Lots of Mustang parts and no Mustang. So Mustang's out getting an 850 cage right now. And uh, what I've been up to is essentially just getting this engine ready for boost. Uh, this is a Gen 4 6 liter LFA aluminum block. Uh, so yeah, I'll take you guys through kind of what I'm doing and uh, how I'm making sure this thing is going to be safe under boost. For starters, this car always had low oil pressure. I changed the O-ring three times in the pump and I realized it can't be the O-ring. So that's kind of why I first decided to take this apart. I was like 20 PSI hot idle with 1540, still ripping 11 second passes on it. So uh, here's the issue. So rod bearings are really beat up in it. So I don't know if this is because I had low oil pressure, it damaged them uh, or if they were damaged and that's why I had low oil pressure. Uh, but regardless, now uh, that was definitely one of the issues. A couple of the main bearings were no good as well. Uh, so what I did is they took the crank to a local machine shop. Uh, they checked it out, polished it up. Uh, and I also uh, essentially got the block cleaned. Uh, gone ahead and honed the cylinders out here. And I also got them to change the cam bearings. Uh, so the first thing we'll be doing here is checking the ring gaps and gapping new rings. So let me show you how that works. All right, when you buy a new set of rings, essentially it'll come in these packages and it'll show you the position. So this one is third, which means that that's the oil ring. And you see the guys I'm working on right now, these are second, so that's obviously the lower ring. So what you're doing is you wanna make sure that this ring end gap is large enough that when the engine heats up, these two don't butt together and blow your pistons apart. So the basic process is we put the ring in the bore, we square it up with the piston, we measure the gap, and then we start filing it off. And essentially what we're doing is we're setting this gap inside of here very precisely. And the tool that I've been using is this little piston ring filer. So you can put a ring on here, you can hold it up square, and you just rotate this, uh, this handle and that will grind a you know, piece of the piston ring off. All right, so let's see what that looks like. So this ring is actually labeled top on one side. Uh, there's a little bit of a chamfer on here. You take your ring, place it in the bore, and we'll grab a piston. The piston can still rock around quite a bit, okay? Once this part of the um, piston slides into the bore, you see it, it, it squares itself up pretty good. So there's a way that we'll double check that later. So then what you do is you get your feeler gauge. And I know these rings out of the box are very close to 21 thou. So that was 21, 22 fits, uh, 24 doesn't fit. So this one's sitting at about 22 thou and we're gonna go up to 30 on it. All right, here's how we do that. Um, so I always just go by the top and I always just grind one side of the ring. See the ring sits on here like so. You push it up against this pin. You rotate the ring until it's just touching the edge of the wheel. And you wanna spin the wheel so it's pushing the piston ring into this, into this pin. Now, this is the 16th ring I've done on this engine. It's the very last one that I saved for you guys. So I've got a good idea of how many, you know, how many turns it takes for me to actually get the right amount off. So I'll grind it down and then I just kind of take a file and just clean the, clean the edge of any burr. Then we go back in the bore, push it back down in here with the piston. Make sure the piston's nice and tight in there. <clears throat> now we'll try the 24 thou first. 24 fits. Uh, we'll try 26. And 26 is too tight, so this one's gonna go back on the grinder. All right, I mentioned there's a couple other ways to check the squareness of the ring, and essentially what I'll do is I'll get the rings roughed in using the piston, like this method. Uh, and then just to double check the square, I'll use this method. So I grab an old ring on the same piston. Let's grab this ring out of here. Now I put the ring on the piston, obviously. You can see, so that piston will not go all the way in and the ring helps to kind of square it up. Okay, so you just go down to keep the ring centered, then it hits the ring until it's pretty square. Okay, so uh, 
to grab your feeler gauges wherever I uh, just put mine. Huh, I don't know where they went. Sorry, I lost my feeler gauges there. So yeah, I square it up with the piston uh, with the ring in it. Grab your feeler again. So I just set this one to 30. It was slightly tight. And so there we are, 30, slightly loose. All right. Uh, and then the last method I'll use is I will grab a caliper and I don't know, just roll it out like an inch or something and just kind of get the ring close. And then essentially you put the caliper up against the deck of the block and you push the ring up so it's so it's uh, you know touching the bottom of the caliper now this method is just a little bit slower which is why I don't really use it when I'm roughing it in but we'll check again still got our 30 cal feeler out and yeah I mean fits slightly tight so all three of those methods just you know agreed with each other so now I'm confident in that ring you probably don't need to check them that thoroughly. Uh, I just really don't want to have ring gap problems. So the last thing I'll do, I'll grab a bigger one, like a 32. And you can see the 32 doesn't fit. So I know the rings around 30 thou, which is what I'm looking for. It's not 32, which would probably be too big. So I can be confident in those ring gap sizes. All right, so I've got all of my second rings done. Uh, each ring is cut specifically to each cylinder. And I essentially labeled all my top rings with, you know, what cylinder they're for. So I'll pull all these rings out, match them with their top rings, uh, and then we can actually start installing stuff into this block. Now, just one comment on ring gap size. I mentioned I'm doing a 30 thou bottom ring, 28 thou top ring. You see the range people recommend for the top is between 26 and 30, and the range people recommend for the bottom is between 26 and 30. Uh, that engine right there has, I believe, a 26 top, 26 bottom, because it didn't, uh, I don't know, seemed right at the time. Uh, that's seen probably up to 18 pounds or so, usually around 14, 15 pounds of boost. So ultimately somewhere in that range is probably gonna be good. Now I've definitely gone on the big side on this one because I'm gonna hopefully run 20 pounds of boost with the S480 E85. I don't really care if it smokes. I really just don't want to, you know, hopefully don't blow the engine up. And if I do blow the engine up, then whatever. It's a stock Gen 4 motor. So, uh, yeah, let's get on to uh, throwing some of the bottom end together here. Now, one thing we actually should talk about quickly is just the cost of this, right? So, um, what I was going for with this, this engine was take it apart, freshen it up. I knew the oil pressure wasn't good. But this is not a full professional rebuild and kind of what I've learned over the years is that it's better to either do everything or nothing and, and kind of when you fall in that gray zone of getting this machined and that machined and this machined and that machine it can end up costing you a lot of money uh, so sometimes it's not the best option but in this case uh, to get the cab bearings pressed in uh, to get the crankshaft over there polished up uh, and the block clean that cost me $275 Canadian uh, Parts wise, so for piston rings, cam bearings, main bearings, and uh, big end rod bearings, that was $400 Canadian shipped to my house. So we're talking 700 bucks. Uh, and over there in the corner, my Kometic head gaskets, uh, those were on sale at a local shop. I got a decent price on them. Those are now 200 bucks. So altogether, we're talking 900 bucks here. And most people would just say, don't even bother taking it apart. Like I say, I probably wouldn't have taken it apart if it wasn't for the oil pressure issue. And that's kind of why this may have cost me slightly more uh, than it would have to. But I mean, if you want to budget for doing something like this, uh, opening up an engine, freshening up the bearings, new rings, quick hone job, cam bearings, right? Like thousand dollars, thousand dollars Canadian. That's like probably $600 US. Uh, in my opinion, that that's money well spent, uh, as long as you're okay with feeler gauges and and you know kind of measuring everything up. Because the last thing you want to do is grenade a motor due to low oil pressure. That being said, uh, if your oil pressure is okay and you have a higher mile higher mileage motor, like I measured these gaps on the old rings coming out, and I was getting high twenties, like twenty sevens, twenty eights, you know, plus or minus a thou here or there. Uh, so those gaps probably would have been perfectly fine. Um, so 
I mean, take it for what it's worth, but you don't necessarily have to open these Gen 4s up either. Like I say, I chose to, you know, this is what I wanted to do for a sanity check. And I'm really gonna try to push this bottom end. I'm really gonna, you know, hopefully get 20 PSI and close to 800 to 1,000 wheel horsepower out of it. Uh, but yeah, let's see how that works. Let's move on with our lives here and uh, we'll start putting this engine together. All right, on to the main bearings. You can see there's two styles. And if you're wondering which is which, they're actually labeled. So this guy is an upper and that is a lower. Now, your engine is upside down on the stand, obviously. Uh, I've left my old bearings exactly where I found them. So, pretty simple process. Uh, I popped the old bearing out. I wanna clean all the junk up in there. Just gonna actually hit that with some brake clean or something here. So you'll see there's a little tang and that has to obviously go in the tang there. And that is it, that is in. So center bearing is the thrust bearing so we'll put the rest of these guys in now. So this is why I always leave bearings in the engine. Then I kind of know when I'm taking that one out, put that one in. Um, so the upper in this case has the holes and you can see there's a tang as well here, which lines up there. And that guy just sits down in there like that. So that one over there. All right, that's it. All the lower main bearings are in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the crank in actually dry. I might put a tiny bit of lubricant on here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the crank in, put all the lower halves on, I'm gonna torque everything down with plastic gauge in here and I'm gonna check and I'm gonna see what the uh, what the tolerance is. Just for fun, I checked it before I took things out. They were close to three thou, two and a half, three thou. So I'm just curious now with the new bearings and the polished crank, what do they come out to? Let's find out. Okay, now it goes without saying, when you're putting in main bearings to fit them up and everything is dry, do not spin the crank, okay? This will all get disassembled and everything will get, you know, uh, engine assembly lube on it and then everything will get torqued down again. All I'm doing right now is literally just checking bearing clearances. So you don't want to spin the crank when all this stuff is dry. However, you also don't want this stuff totally covered in oil because that can affect your measurement. Okay, now just quickly looking at one of the uh, lower bearings, mind you. Keep mixing up what I'm saying, upper and lower. This is obviously the lower. Uh, these caps are all labeled. One, two, one, two, three, four, five from the front of the engine to the back. So I made note of that when I uh, took it apart, obviously, but just in case you haven't. Um, and then, yeah, there's essentially a spot for the tang on the bearing, uh, just like the... Uh, just like the upper was, and you just put the bearing into the shell, and then this guy will go in like that. Now, before this goes in, I'm gonna cut a piece of plastic gauge and put it on here. All right, so I'm optimistic, and I purchased the one to three style plastic gauge. Uh, it's essentially just this real thin green junk here. So, oh my gosh, this is tough. There we go. So you cut a piece about the width of the bearing and you just rest it on the top of the bearing and then we will put the cap on and loosely, you know, put some bolts in there. So I'll do this for all these bearing caps and we'll torque everything down and we will then loosen all the bolts, pull all the caps off and we will see what that does. All right, so what did I notice here? All of the upper bearings, which are the ones down here, the tangs are all on this side and all of the lower bearings, which are on the caps, the tang is all on this side. So that makes sense, right? Uh, the two tangs don't butt up against each other, so you have one on this side, one on this side. I think that's to prevent the bearing from spinning around inside of the cap. So we will throw some bolts in here, we will torque everything up, 
and then we will take everything apart and take a look at the plastic gauge, see how our clearances are. Caps are on, um, so we start by torquing these inside bolts to 15 foot-pounds. There's the sequence, uh, just Google it, it'll show you. Uh, so my half-inch uh, torque wrench doesn't go to 15 foot-pounds, so convert that to inch-pounds, which is 180. So we will do 180 inch-pounds on the inside bolts, and we go to the outside bolts, we'll torque the outside bolts, uh, then there's side bolts, we'll do the side bolts, and then we will take everything apart and we will look at the plastic gauge. All right, now in the actual torque procedure, you're supposed to give this a smack forward and a smack backward to set the uh, thrust bearing before you torque these bolts. I'm not gonna do that when I'm just checking um, the bearing. So we've got our torque angle gauge here, and essentially how this works is I always like to essentially twist on this guy a bit, just like it's gonna get torqued set her to zero degrees there so now i know when i put my bar on here if i can get my bar on here as soon as i apply a bit of load you'll see this guy is set at zero okay so now we just tighten this guy there's 30 60 70 80. that's it it's done and we will do that for the rest of the bolts And I found a much more elegant way of doing this. So before I was using this tang and I was using this bolt that I would move around. Now I realize it actually works much better if I just use it against the bearing cap. Well, maybe it doesn't. All right, now we will do the same sequence with these studs uh, down to 15 foot pounds and then we will add 50 degrees to them and we're gonna take all this junk apart and we're gonna see how the plastic gauge looks. All right, last thing, side bolts. These guys go in to 18 foot-pounds. All right, everything's together, torqued up. We'll take everything apart now. All right, now probably the hardest part of all this is getting these caps off. As you can see, they're very, very tight. I'm gonna get these guys off without ruining your plastic gauge underneath, so it should be fun. Sophisticated millwright tool. And aha, there we have it. There's our plastic gauge mark, so let's see what that comes out to. Alrighty, so what you do now is you take your plastic gauge uh, piece of thing here and you put this up beside it and you use the inch side because millimeters kind of suck. Let's see what we're at. So, I mean, this one's looking like it's between two and three. So, we call that two and a half. So, yeah, repeat the process. Now, it's funny, um, for such a precise measurement, after you do a couple of these, you can tell. Like I can tell right away looking at that, that's got to be a two thou again. Uh, so, let's see where we're at. Two thou. It's a little closer view here. You can see that guy, you know, green measures your scale there. So, the wider it is, the tighter the fit is. And, like I say, you're going for between. Uh, I would say one and a half to three, three and a half is probably getting pretty big. If you're like five or six, you're way too big. Now, this is somewhat interesting to me, at least, probably not to you. Now, this was the worst spot. This crank bearing was the worst one, the ugliest. But looking at it, this one, you're sitting at two and a half to three thou after the polish. So it just goes to show, don't be afraid to take your crank in, get it polished if it looks horrible, because you can still fall within the proper tolerances. All right, with that being said, all these caps are, you know, between two and three thou, so I'm happy with that. Good enough for this thing at least. Uh, so yeah, now I'll essentially pull this guy out 
uh, cover everything in the assembly loop, throw it all back together, and we'll move on to installing the pistons. Uh, now, one thing to remember, actually, that uh, the machine shop told me, I trust this guy, he builds a lot of racing engines, is that plastic gauge actually reads a little bit big. So if you're seeing 3 thou on plastic gauge, you might actually be like two and three quarters or so. So as long as you're not seeing like three and a half and four on your mains, you should be fine. Alrighty, crankshaft is in, torque down, spins very nicely. Uh, so yeah, now we'll move on to installing the pistons. All right, so these pistons came out of a friend's car. They just looked nicer than the ones I had, so I'll throw them in. Uh, these are cracked rod caps, they're called. So if you look at the surface of the rod cap where it meets up, it's totally not smooth. And that's actually by design. So the cap will only actually uh, sit on there one way. That's how the cracking lines up. Here, let me fit this up a little bit. All right, that's a better view. So you see that cracked part lines up perfect. These rod caps are not interchangeable. So make sure you don't mix, uh, you know, mix these up because you'll not be able to take one rod cap and throw it on another rod. So you want to do these guys one at a time, label everything, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll throw our bearings in here. We will oil them up, piston rings on, put it in, and uh, yeah, we'll give everything a, give everything a check. All righty, now what we will do is we will oil up um, all the crank bearing journals. Now these ones I'm gonna do slightly differently. I'm actually gonna oil up the crank bearing journal. I'm gonna put all the pistons in, um, tighten all the uh, you know caps just loosely. Then I will flip the engine upside down and then one at a time, I'll take the cap off, clean it, clean the crank, and then plastic gauge as we go. Uh, and then essentially the reason I'm doing this is because I just tried one of these without piston rings in it and the piston actually just fell out onto the floor doesn't look like it messed anything up, but uh, this seems like uh, it'll be a little better idea. Now, uh, on the piston, this dot goes towards the front of the engine. You have a top ring gap. You want to stagger the ring gap, so the second ring gap's over here. And then for safe measure, the oil gaps, uh, the oil ring gaps, sorry, it's hard to see. I've got one on this side, and I've got one on that side. So there are no two gaps anywhere that line up. All right, so just like before, Take this cap off. And these bearings do not have a top and a bottom, but they have to go in the tang. So we got that bearing in. That one into the tang. Loosely put these back in so you don't lose a bearing. Okay, let's start with the oil rings. So you get one of these waffly guys. And you get two of these thin rings. Kind of do these one groove at a time. You just slowly work it down to the oil ring groove here at the bottom. So that's that one. Take this waffly thing. And it just hangs out on there. And then I will stagger the gap of the waffly thing with the rest of the piston. Oil ring isn't supposed to really hold any pressure anyways, so I'm not too worried about staggering these, but I just do anyways. So I'll put this end way over here somewhere. Oh, and look at that, I've messed that up.
Okay, that's it for the oil ring. Now, since this is number three, I'll grab my number three set of rings that I cut earlier. This is the bottom ring. Uh, it says on it top, which means that that side goes up. So again here, we just go in the first groove first and we will bring her down to the second groove. There we go. So put that cap that way. Top ring. Top ring has a little chamfer on one side, which I put down. So my one gap's over there. This gap goes over here, just like that. So there you have that. Um, you have now your top and your second ring staggered apart 180 degrees and my oil rings uh, there's one gap there and my other gap has moved on me so I'll move him over here one more double check that the oil ring is in there correctly one more double check of our gaps and they look good so now we grab this guy here. And this comes up from the bottom. This thing's covered in oil, by the way. So you get to your bottom ring. Again, when I'm doing this, I just like to triple check the gap isn't lined up. So that's the bottom ring in. Top ring now. Okay, that's done. You can see we've got her sitting like so. Okay, dot forward, this guy goes in like so. Pretty easy. Let's keep my hand down here at the rod, make sure that uh, bearing isn't gonna tap anything. There she is. Alrighty, as you can see, we've got all the pistons in and essentially rinse and repeat now. So plastic gauge on the rod, end cap here, we will put the bolts on, torque things down, take a look at it. All right, just plastic gauge the first rod bearing here. It's very hard to see the shadow of this stuff, but we're probably sitting around two thou, and possibly slightly less. Uh, so we'll just repeat that process and torque everything down a final time and we are done. All right, that is that. Uh, essentially checked all the rod bearings. We're all around two thou. Uh, I would say 1.75 to 2.5 was the range there. Uh, so everything looks good. The motor appears to spin over uh, nicely. So uh, let's hope that this thing's ready to hold some boost. Hope you guys learned something watching this video. Uh, and as always, I will talk to you in the next one. Thanks for checking out the channel.